good morning. We're about five minutes from starting, but I wanted to check the audio on this. So right before we start, I might ask again to make sure people can hear me. If anybody out there can hear me now and wants to type in a question or in the chat thing and say, I can hear you, that would be great. If not, someone else will do it. I had a problem with a previous webinar where the audio didn't come through. Kind of defeats it. Then it just becomes a slideshow that you're just looking at pictures. <laughs> so if anybody wants to do that, it would be great. But we're about four or five minutes from starting. This will take half an hour. We could go on for hours talking about trucking and per diem and tax laws and things, but Everybody's got work to do. We've got about three or four minutes before we start. So we're going to let some more people get in here and then we'll get this thing going. We try to start on time and end on time. Good morning, everyone. We're about two minutes away from starting. I'm testing out the audio levels, so if any of you can hear me, can you just type in the chat box on the right side of probably of your screen that you can hear me? I would really appreciate that. Because I never know. I hear me. Another couple of minutes and we'll get going. One more minute and we'll get things started here.
we've got some people still rolling in here, so I'm going to let everybody get situated a minute, and then we'll get going. Again, I'm testing audio level, so I'm not sure you can hear me. Could somebody who can hear me type in the chat that they can hear me? I would really appreciate that. The chat is in that taskbar that opens up on probably the right side of your screen. Thank you for telling me you can hear me. Um, I don't want to mispronounce your name. Is it Yehor? I think it is. Again, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but I appreciate the feedback. I went through a whole webinar and no one could hear me. And it was, I felt really bad at the end of it. And some of the people stuck it all the way through. They're probably thinking that I, it, it might work itself out. Okay, it's 12.02. I think it's time to get started. Thank you all for coming today. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the new tax law and per diem specifically and how it might affect your trucking company. Let me get my little truck moving here. There it goes. A little bit about me. My name's Mike. I started Superior Trucking Payroll Service. Uh, I've been doing payroll and I've dealt with trucking for a while. Uh, I, was, I was on your side of the, where I worked for the trucking company and I was the CFO. And that's what got me started in this, but that's another story for another day. Here's what we're going to talk about today. What changed with per diem with the new tax laws? We've probably all read about different articles that you'll see in different publications about, oh, per diem is going away. And then why paying per diem can save you a lot of money. If you're not paying it now, there's a great opportunity there. Uh, the other benefits of per diem, when not to pay per diem, and then any questions that you have. If you have questions while we're going, feel free to type them in the question box. Even if I don't, I'm going to try and answer them at the end. But even if I don't get to it at the end, I'll reply back to you. And we can either have a conversation or an email back and forth about it. So we're happy to help with that. Congress passed House Resolution 1, at least. Con yeah, the Congress did an act to provide a reconciliation pursuant to titles two and five of the concurrent resolution on the budget for the fiscal year 2018. It's a lot of words to say tax cut, isn't it? So the, the highlights of the, the tax cut, I, I, have we come up with a nice snazzy name for it yet? The Trump tax cut, like the Bush tax cuts of 16 years ago. Uh, lower, lower marginal tax rates, lower tax rates across the board. Uh, the 15% rate became the 12% rate, for example. Uh, the child tax credit went up, went from 1000 to up to $2,000. Uh, the personal exemptions went away, which is going to be tricky for those of us on the payroll side, because right now you're getting W-4s from your employees, and they, they write number of exemptions on there. Well, that's, that's going to go away. They've got to completely redo the W-4. Uh, and a higher standard deduction, almost doubles, So, which, which is great for those who don't itemize anyway. And then, of course, per diem. We're going to talk about that in a minute. One of the couple of things we're not going to talk about is we're not going to go into great depth on how the tax cut tax changes affect your trucking company. Every trucking company is different, and so having it as a group discussion becomes a very vague conversation that probably doesn't help you that much. We can help you with that. We can also recommend you to other people that can help you with that. If you need a reference for those kinds of things, shoot me an email, give me a call, and I'll connect you with somebody. We're happy to do it. Um, it's also not going to be a discussion about the politics of it. Who should get tax cuts? Should there be tax cuts? I have opinions just like all the rest of you, but no one cares. So we're just going to fo focus on what is, and we're going to go from there. Did per diem go away? Well, it didn't. It didn't. What did go away was that drivers who were not getting paid per diem by the trucking company. They were just getting their 35, 38, 40 cents a mile or whatever. And they would deduct it on Schedule A of their individual tax return, of their 1040. And in the bottom of Schedule A, there was 
other miscellaneous deductions. And part of that was uh, unreimbursed employee expenses, Form 2106, and they would deduct it there. They would take 80% of $63 a day and deduct it there. And there were limitations. It was subject to a 2% floor, which meant only the amount in excess of 2% of their adjusted gross income could be deducted and things like that. But that's all going away now. None of it matters anymore because that's no longer deductible for a company, a W-2 driver, to deduct per diem on his taxes. That whole unreimbursed employee expense went away. However, with the standard deduction almost doubling, very few drivers would have deducted it anyway. Uh, the only situations I can think of where they would have deducted it is where they already were going to itemize based on their interest in their state and local taxes and charitable contributions and things like that. And it was the, 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 the driver and spouse were a team, and they both took per diem. And even then, the deduction they were going to get with a higher standard deduction wasn't going to be significant. This isn't the move, bumping up the standard deduction was going to kill it for them anyway. So, but that they no longer can deduct per diem on their taxes. Um, business owners, com trucking companies, including Schedule C owner operators or smaller trucking companies, can absolutely still deduct it. None of that changed. It's just that it went away on Schedule C. And so you see articles uh, through with the different transportation publications. And they'll say, per diem went away. Well, it did for certain people in certain situations, but it really wasn't that deductible for them anyway. For companies, it's still there. It's still 80% deductible uh, because the drivers are subject to DOT hours of service. So the good news is it's stays. And it's even more incentive for companies to pay per diem. So let's talk about that a minute. Let's talk about per diem. Uh, I've got a link in here to the IRS publication. I think that one's from 2011, but they basically just refer back to it each time. They raised the rates a couple of years ago. Um, and it says that truck drivers are special rules for the transportation industry. It's right in there. So I think it's section four. And it says that trucking companies can reimburse drivers up to $63 a day for meals and incidentals while they're on the road. The rules are the driver must be subject to DOT hours of service laws. It's funny, it doesn't say log, it says subject to hours of service laws. And they must be in multiple meals and incidental markets. Uh, the, there are many meals and incidental markets. If your driver's gone overnight, there's, I can't imagine how they wouldn't be in different meals and incidental markets unless they only run around your city if they just happen to run they just don't they just sleep in their truck because the their house is five miles away or something or they're a local driver but they drive two hours to get to you to go to work uh those guys wouldn't get it but everybody else will so it's a it's a big deal for the for the driver and we're going to explain that and it's a big deal for the trucking company as well uh and i put on there pay a substitute for wage and be a hero you'll be a hero to the company You'll be a hero to the driver. Let's talk about that next. Per diem is not 100% deductible. It used to be 50% deductible like meals, but they graduated it up oh, about man, 15 years ago. Graduated it up to 80% de being deductible. So of that, you know, if you pay five days at $63 a day, you only can deduct four, the 80%. So I ran through and made an example of how per diem would affect your business. I was super conservative with it. You'll see I've got the, the old higher marginal tax rate in my example. I've got a work comp rate of 10%. I don't know obviously what all of you are paying, but 10%, I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan. There's a reasonable number here. Um, if somebody wants their numbers, me to crunch their numbers for them, all they got to do is for drivers and their work comp rate, and I'll help them with it. But we just boiled it down to one driver for one week. We ran 2,500 miles, got 35 cents a mile, and was gone for five days. You know, from, it just went out for a couple of days, stayed overnight, came back a couple of days. Pretty standard for a driver. Obviously, there's some that work more and some that work less. It depends on where you are. This slide has a lot on it, and I will do my best to explain it. If at any point you have questions, send me a question or contact me after the webinar. But what we have here is we've got, this, this column is people that paid per diem, and the no column here is people that did not pay per diem to the companies paying it to the driver. So in this column, you've got 
They both had 875. Their rate times their miles, 35 cents a mile times 2,500 miles. We subtract per diem here. Uh, pointer options. I want to. I want a highlighter. We've got per diem here that we're deducting it from the driver. So the wage part is only $560. And because only 80% of this number is deductible, you've got to pay tax on an extra $63. That's 20% of the per diem. Okay. And again, I know it's kind of confusing, but it, I'd be, it make, it'll work itself out. Um, if you paid tax at 39% on that, and again, you're not going to pay it that high with the new tax rates, but I wanted to be super conservative about it. You're going to pay an extra $24 in tax because you don't get to deduct that $63. Okay, that, that's a bummer. You're gonna save on payroll tax. I did not put unemployment in here because I figure your driver's gonna max out your unemployment in your state. Most states, unemployment cap out at about ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. Some states go up to like 50,000, but let's not, I'm not even gonna count that. We're just gonna do the, the Social Security and Medicare savings. By not paying that on that $315 times 7.65%, you get $24, at this point before we talk about work comp. Per diem generally is not subject to workers' comp. Per diem is you're not going to pay it on that $315. So you're going to save $31.50 in workers' comp costs. This is actual cost. This is not you're going to save a tenth of an FTE or any of that kind of stuff, pie in the sky savings. This is you're going to write a check to your workers' comp insurance, excuse me, for that much less. You add those up, you get $31.03. And again, this is the conservative one. I think most of you, or almost all of you, are going to save more than this, but this is the, the conservative viewpoint. $31.03 per driver per week. So some of you might be doing back of the napkin math right now and going, okay, it's 30, I've got this many drivers, 52 weeks in a year. Well, we did the math with 25 drivers. Uh, we took kind of an average of the people that were going to attend the webinar. Uh, there's obviously huge variation. Some have 10 trucks. Some have over 100. So $31.03 a week times 25 drivers times 52 weeks is over $40,000 that you'll save your company in insurance cost. And it's real money. So it's how often as a finance person or an admin person, can you save your company $40,000, help them be $40,000 more profitable in a year? You know, who wouldn't want to do that? Typically, in a situation like this, you'd look at it and go, oh, we're taking it from the driver. So the drivers would lose money. Well, let's talk about the driver. Here's the driver, same kind of math, 875 again, right? Here's the regular driver. This side is regular driver. No per diem. He gets taxed out. He pays all his stuff. He gets 700 bucks at the end of the week. You know, he can make a living. He's fine. If we, if we take the $315 out of the driver before tax, because it's reimbursement, tax him on $560, he'll pay his FICA, he'll pay his Social Security, he'll pay his state. I use Michigan. Plug in your own state tax rate. Um, and again, we can help you with that too. We can tell you what it's going to be. But I'm in Michigan, so I usually use Michigan's numbers. Michigan also has a flat tax rate, which isn't so bad either. Uh, the driver gets the 46406 after tax, but then he gets the per diem back, and he gets 77906 versus 70377. The driver gets $75.29 more in his or her paycheck every week for per diem for paying because you paid them per diem. That's over $3,900 a year. It's the biggest raise your driver's ever going to get. It's a, it's, I mean, it's really life-changing money for these. I mean, an extra 75 bucks a week, that's huge. Who wouldn't want that? That's why, I mean, you can be a hero for your company because your drivers are going to love you too. You know, 75 bucks a week, I'd make me like anybody more. And it's a big deal. And the driver's... The drivers that know about it, they know all about this. And so if you ask them, they'll tell you too, that they, 
they've seen all this too. So $75.29 a week to the driver, more. It doesn't cost you anything. You actually save money. So it's a win for everybody except for the IRS and the work comp insurance. But I don't think we're really concerned about them. We don't have problems finding uh, work comp insurance people. We have problems finding drivers. Which brings us to the other benefits of paying per diem. Driver recruiting and retention. I, every time I see a driver ad, whether it's in the newspaper or it's on Craigslist or it's in Facebook or on their website, I'll look at a lot of companies' websites. And the first thing I look for is, do they put on their website that they pay per diem? The drivers that know what per diem is are the guys you're going to want. So I think it's really important that you tell them, look, we pay per diem. And we pay the most we can pay you because we want you to have as much money in your pocket as you can. And you can educate them about it. You can show them basically the slide that I just showed you. Say, so look, you can have 70 bucks more now every week, starting this week. It's a great deal for them. Uh, hopefully some of that would be because you have recruiting and retention because the driver is not going to leave you over money and go work somewhere that doesn't have per diem because he's going to have less in his check and he's going to be aware of it. So it's, it's super, you know, it's such a valuable tool and it costs you nothing to do it. It actually saves you money to do it. Uh, because of that, hopefully you'd have less advances. You know, if you give a driver an extra 75 bucks a week, hopefully pretty soon he, the driver's not leaving in the hole, hitting the uh, first truck stuff that he hits to max out his card to get money from you. You know, things like that just makes everything easier because the driver's got more money. Uh, better morale. I mean, again, you're showing the driver that, look, I'm on your side. I want to help you get as much money as possible. Uh, that we're, a, you know, we're a team, not as team drivers, maybe necessarily because you're in the office, but you know, we we want to help you. We want to we want to be on your side. We want to show you how we can how you can get more money without having to do any more. Uh, what driver isn't going to like that? And they're going to like you for it. All these things are going to help your recruiting and retention. It can only you know, how can it hurt? Here are some downsides to paying per diem because people ask, well, there's got to be something. Well, sure. The drivers that were deducting per diem on their 1040s can't. Which that went away anyway. So what do we care about that? Uh, work comp claims get paid at the net because they don't get paid. On the, on the example we had, the 875 down to 560, the work comp claims get paid at 560 a week instead of 875 a week because the 315 is considered to be reimbursement. But I've not met a lot of trucking company owners that get really broken up about that. Uh, hopefully you have very rare work comp claims. And if not, you could, there's, you know, you could always work it out another way. So, but that, that, that is something. And then the payroll servicing, that's just me being salesy. So we're going to skip that. Uh, here's when you don't want to pay per diem. You think, well, per diem is great. Why we should pay it to everyone. Well, you should offer it to everyone. And I would opt in everybody unless somebody wanted to opt out. Sometimes there are drivers that want to opt out. Uh, if you've got a driver who feels like that's going to hurt, it is going to affect how much he gets in his Social Security payout. But for a driver where that's 30 years away, he doesn't care because he wants the money now. A driver who's two years away may care significantly more. And so he may be like, look, I need to run out my Social Security for whatever reason. Uh, I'm going to retire soon. I, I don't want you taking per diem out of me. Um, there are also occasional times where somebody's trying to get a house and it shows their earnings as being less because it is because your taxable earnings, again, were 560 a week in that example. Um, what we have done with some of our clients employees is we send a letter to the bank explaining how everything works. Usually that gets it done. Um, but you know, that it's a very real thing. And what for some of those people, then we just turn off pretty in for a month, they get four good check stubs and they turn it back on. Um, so that's, that's something to consider. And some drivers just don't want it. They just are like, nope, I don't want you doing that. I have reasons that I can't explain and I just don't want you to do it. Uh, my advice to our clients is never, ever, ever lose a driver over this finding, especially a good driver. Good drivers are so hard to find. 
that you just, it, it's not, I mean, yeah, the savings is nice, but you don't want to lose a good driver over it. Then you say, fine, we won't pay you per diem, we'll pay everybody else, but not you. Never make a driver mad about that. It's just not worth it. That's my advice anyway. I, Okay, the rest of this stuff is all salesy nonsense um, that I'm not going to really go through because this is an educational webinar and not a sales webinar. And so I'm going to skip through those. And if anybody has questions, start typing them in. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. And I've got one question already about the slides. Yes, I'm going to email the slides out to all of you. You'll get those probably by the end of the day or by tomorrow, end of tomorrow in PDF format. Uh, so if you have any, and then if any follow-up questions, of course, you can ask me. Um, another question is about the ways of paying per diem. Something about different, okay, different ways of paying per diem. Some companies pay per diem by the mile. Instead of paying, say, 35 cents a mile to the driver, we pay 28 cents a mile to the driver as wage and 7 cents a mile as per diem. Yeah, you can do that. The IRS regulations are very specific. They even they use that as an example, but they're very specific about that you're allowed to pay up to $63 a day. If you pay less than that, the IR, you won't have a problem with the IRS, but you're losing out on a lot of the savings from the workers' comp insurance. If you pay more than that, then you, now you've got an IRS problem. So my advice to all of our clients, and not all of them do this, we'll help, we help clients however they want to do it. But my advice to clients is to not pay by the mile for per diem and not to pay percentage for per diem, but to pay the 59, just pay, pay per diem days, not miles, not percentages, because then you're always going to max out your per diem savings and still say, stay legal and keep the IRS off your back, which is really the, where you want to be. That's the best spot to be in. You can... You can pay percentage, but if you're over $63 a day, again, you could run into problems with the IRS. And if you're under $63 a day, then you're losing out. So percentage or extra cents per mile, you, you can do all those things. Uh, but I wouldn't. I would pay days. Let's see. What else? Let's see if I've got any other questions here. If anybody's got a quest, any more questions, shoot, shoot them to me a minute. I'm a little ahead of schedule because I skipped all the salesy stuff in there. Um, talks about how awesome we are, but that seems very self-serving. And I really just want to educate people out of this. Uh, we were, I did this webinar because I started getting phone calls from trucking, state trucking associations who had seen that I was quoted in a magazine about it. And they, their clients want, had questions. Their accountants were telling them, don't pay per diem anymore. Well, that's not true. You pay per diem still. As a company, you just don't take it as a deduction if you're personal. Um, any other questions here? Okay, let's see. Let me look one more time. Um, as an aside, where well, I think we're about done here, but next month, actually it'll be probably beginning of March, we're going to do a webinar on driver recruiting and retention. We've done it before and it was well received. Uh, and then we did it a second time and the audio was bad. That's the one that went, things went sideways for me. So we're going to do that again next month. We'll reach out to everybody and let you know what it is. It'll be the same style as this one as far as half an hour educational, trying to help you guys keep good drivers. Uh, that's the number one question we get from our clients all the time is, can you help me find drivers? And so that we have a whole webinar devoted to that. We have some low-cost ideas on how to attract and retain drivers. Um, if you're jonesing for it really bad, call me. We'll talk about it. Uh, but, uh, see, oh, wait, I just got another question. Sorry. Oh, the questions show up so small in here. That's why I can't read them. Okay, we got a question. Are all states $63 a day? Does it matter where the driver is staying overnight? The IRS allows $63 a day. Uh, the IRS side, $63 a day. Um, does it matter where they're staying? They just can't be staying at home. They got to be out overnight. Um, as far as the workers' comp savings goes, there are there are insurance. Most insurance companies will allow you the full $63 a day. There are some, and you'll have to check with your agent, that only allow, I think it's $38 a day. It's the NCCI rules. Workers' comp people can talk much more 
authoritatively than me about this, but they only allow $38 a day. But again, you're still, then you still have savings. $38 a day times five is $190 in per diem that you could deduct from the workers' comp, which at 10% saves you 19 bucks a driver a week, you know, 19 bucks a driver a week, which is still a thousand dollars if my back of the napkin math is good here. It's $988 a year per driver then at 10%. It's still very worthwhile. And your driver still gets the full benefit of the savings. You could still pay the full 63, but the workers' comp people would only acknowledge 38 of that. So the driver still gets the full advantage. And again, that's a huge recruiting tool. Look, driver, we're on your side, man. We want you to be, We this doesn't have to be antagonistic, man. Let's work together. So I hope that answers your question. If not, uh, follow up with me. I'll be happy to talk to you about it. Um, any last requests before we go? Let's see here. I'm just trying to. Okay, let's see here. Oh, I got a follow up. Awesome. It shows it to me in a very small window, so I'm just trying to work this out a second. Somebody's been using a different rate. Does the city have anything to do with the daily rate amount allowed? No, it does for non trucking people. There's a whole list. They have CONUS and OCONUS. CONUS is continental United States, OCONUS is outside the continental United States for a driver who goes to Toronto. Or if any of you guys are in Hawaii and you need me to visit you. I'll be glad to do it. Uh, wouldn't that be nice? I'm in Michigan and it's snowing. Uh, the city doesn't matter. They just they get $63 everywhere, uh, which works out pretty well because I would imagine most of your drivers, if they're going through Chicago at night and that's where they stop for the night, they're not stopping downtown at the Intercontinental or whatever. They're probably stopping at a truck stop and parking, sitting and sleeping in the sleeper. Uh, but it doesn't say that it, the law does not require you to have a sleeper, by the way. you could They could be getting a hotel room. And the hotel room is not part of the $63. The $63 is meals and incidentals. Incidentals like a toothbrush, you know, shampoo, those kinds of things. And then meals, of course, 63 bucks a day. Um, I've not met a lot of truck drivers who actually pull $63 a day on that stuff, but I'm sure that there are many that exist. Uh, but thank you for the question. It's tw what, 1228. I wanted to get you out of here by 1230 so you could get on with your day. Thank you for attending. Any follow-up questions, like I said, my phone number's up here right now. I'm going to email it to you. Um, feel free to give me a call. We're here to help people. Uh, look at our website, truckingpayroll.com. When I get questions more than a couple of times, I'll usually post something on there about, hey, I got a question from people about this. Um, but we're, we're here to be a resource. So thank you very much for attending this webinar. Again, hopefully I'll see you all in the beginning of March with one on driver recruiting and retention. Have a great day.